Okay, the next hip exercise that I'm going to show you is uh, called the Morsali routine. It's just another series of hip exercises. These ones are a little bit more technical, and so I'll talk to you about some of the cues and the things that you really want to think about. Uh, these are named after Noradine Morsali, who is an Algerian 1500 meter runner, former world record holder, uh, Olympic champion, and uh, world champion in the 1500 meters. And it just so happened uh, he attended a community college at Riverside Community College. So some people in uh, around 1990 had the pleasure of running against uh, the future world record holder. Um, lucky them, huh? Anyways, uh, more sois. You're going to start the first of the three exercises laying on your side. And you want to think about your pelvis and the position of your pelvis. You want it vertical or slightly angled forward and when I mean forward I'm rolling towards the camera I'm going to bend my knees by moving them forward so my back and my feet are in line I'm not going to bend my knees by bringing my feet back I'm going to bend my knees by bringing my knees forward I'm going to make sure my pelvis is rotated down towards the ground so I have that type of angle and now I'm going to lift my top knee and contract. Okay, these are called chicken wings. Some people like to call them clam shells. And a key uh, cue here is if I can't go very high with my knee. This is as high as I can go if I keep my pelvis locked and keep it forward. The common mistake with this one is to allow my pelvis to rotate every time I come up. And now I'm doing this wrong. And you can see how much higher my leg is coming up. And what happens when I do that is now I'm not using this muscle, the gluteus minimus in particular, to do this exercise. Now I'm doing it correctly once again. Holding my pelvis stable, using my core and my hip muscles to get that movement in okay this is again doing it wrong or just staying back here sometimes there'll be someone talking to you so you're looking up at them and you can see how high my leg is coming instead of keeping that pelvis rotated forward or down depending on how you want to think about it and doing this exercise okay I'll roll over and do the repetitions on this side as well. So again, the, the way you're going to get in position, start with the legs straight, bend the knees by bringing them forward, rotate your pelvis, stabilize it, and go. Okay, the second exercise is called side leg raises. I'm going to start the exact same way. I'm going to bend, I'm going to lie on my side, bring my knees forward, engage my pelvis forward, and then I'm going to take my top leg and I'm going to straighten it so it's right over my foot, and then I'm just going to push it back a little more so it's kind of behind me. I'm going to adjust a little bit so you can see. So now I'm pushing it behind me, pelvis is rotated forward, and I'm going. I'm leading slightly with my heel as I go up. The common mistakes on this one, probably mistake number one, is the leg is going to drift forward. So I'm doing them here. But we want to be back here so that I'm working the gluteus medius, that hip muscle. If I drift forward, I'm starting to use the muscle in front. For runners, this muscle is already really strong. This is the weak muscle that we want to work. So we need to keep that leg back behind us. And then the other mistake is that we unstabilize that pelvis or roll it back. And again, now I'm using this muscle in front to do the exercise. And so I need to keep my pelvis rotated forward and the leg back behind me. It's a little bit of an awkward position, but when you get it right, you'll know it because you're going to feel those muscles in your hip or your upper glute contracting. Okay.
Think about nice controlled movements. We're not trying to do it really fast. We want nice and control, up and down. On the way down, we want the muscle doing the work as well. Not up and then just dropping, up and dropping. Instead, up, down, very controlled. Okay, our third muscle, or third, sorry, third exercise. I'm gonna switch sides, so that hip's getting fatigued. Starting in the same position as before, so our chicken wing or clamshell position. Now I'm gonna take my top leg, I'm gonna lift it slightly, and now I'm going to go up to that finishing position of the side leg raise, remember it's up and back. So here was the side leg raise, finishing there, starting here. So this is now the exercise. These are called frogs, and up and back with frogs. If the workout calls for frog circles, which it will in time, I'm actually not sure if it does right at the start, frog circles would come after this. So let's say we had 30 repetitions of the chicken wings and the side leg raises. You would do 20 of the frogs and then you'd get to here after 20 and then you're going to do 10 circles forward 10 circles backwards so out of the total of 30 we do 30 of the frogs and we have 10 to go so we do 10 circles forward 10 circles backwards okay so those exercises are the morsely routine it's the chicken wings side leg raises and frogs, possibly adding frog circles forwards and backwards at the end. And again, these are for our, those stabilizing muscles, the gluteus medius and gluteus minimus, really important for allowing us to be healthy and which allows us to run more mileage and therefore allows us to be stronger. One other thing that I'll add is when we get these muscles really strong, they do allow for greater force production down into the ground as well, which helps with our speed. If each stride through greater force production is increasing just a centimeter, imagine how that would add distance in a 5,000 meter race, how many steps you're taking, which to say you're taking a thousand steps times a centimeter, what is that, about 100 meters, I think, so you're now 100 meters faster. Voila, these are important exercises.